focus on that. Consciousness is who we are. It's an intelligent, illuminated energy. Get the words mixed there. It's who we are and it's what we do our thinking with. And the expansion of the consciousness and connecting to all levels is a very deep and complex subject. But I will expand on that in a further detail in further video series. All that happens, there's your physical body. And let's say your uh, emotional or astral body. Your consciousness as you are right now just shifts. It just shifts into the astral body. And just a little point there, that is what happens at death. All you're doing is shifting your consciousness from your physical into another body. You can shift into the etheric body, the emotional body, you can go into the soul body. Our consciousness can go anywhere. <clears throat> Again, it's a technique that we need to learn. One thing that will slam the brakes on quicker than anything is a fear. Now, some of the effects that you'll get are quite strong, and I will cover those in a moment. So you're lying on your bed, and how long will this actually typically take? Now I would say anything up to 20 minutes to induce what is close to a sleep state, also sometimes known as a cognitive state, it's almost a half state. You need to hang in there with your mind, you don't want to fall asleep. It doesn't matter if you do, because that is a natural time when we project out anyway. But what we're trying to do here <clears throat> is achieve consciousness outside of the body. So let's go through what, what you're likely to experience. You're likely to hear a click. Now, I actually think the next one I'm going to describe is quite wild and fun. And you'll know exactly what I mean when it happens to you. Now, typically, let's say your feet at the end of the bed, they start to wobble like you're on a waterbed. And you think, oh, this is strange. Don't be worried by it. It's quite natural. What's happening is, things are disaligning so they've separated and they're moving around that's all you're feeling and it is quite a strange but natural feeling to feel like your physical feet but also your astral feet <coughs> excuse me let me just have a little sip of water we have a little froggy it's better the next one this is the one that I like it's like a huge buzz across your body it's a massive energy. If any of you have ever stood near a mains pylon or got close to it and you feel like this buzzing, this intense buzzing, you'll get this buzz and you'll get this rush over your head. Now this is one of the things that tells you that you're just about to charge and you're just about to release. You will start to float above your body. You might not be aware of it initially. Now, in the early stages, what you'll often do is you'll project up, you'll hover for a bit, and you drop back down again. What you need to do is the rope technique. It's just imagine grabbing hold of the rope and pulling yourself out the way. Now, typically most people in the early stages of astral projection end up in like, the bedroom or somewhere pretty close. It's interesting, you'll find that things are slightly back to front. There's a slight dilation in reality in the astral. For example, that you could your window is shut, but in the astral it's actually open. Now, don't be phased by that. It's just one of these sort of strange inner world kind of things that we have. It's quite a detailed subject to go into the reasons why on that. Typically what you want to do is once you're actually out of the body is move away from the physical body. So go outside, go into the you know, wherever. Think of somewhere. Let's just imagine, say, going to a park that you know. The reason being is that if you hover around your physical body, it has a natural mechanism to pull you back in. It's not a problem. And if you were down the park and you bump into something, you do sort of come back in and land. Some, you must have experienced this sometimes, where you feel like you're falling and you hit suddenly hit the ground. This is where your astrals actually shot back in your body a bit too quick and you go, ooh. All part of natural things. So what are we likely to encounter? We're likely to encounter people. Now one thing you must realise is that in the astral plane, 
normal people let's just say you go shopping and you go down the high street or town wherever or in the city it's pretty much the same thing you're not going to find anything different don't expect when you're in the spiritual planes or at least the lower planes to suddenly meet masters and those wonderful people and religious figures not in the lower planes be on your guard and I'm not saying this in a negative or worrying sense be on your guard for those that are pretending to be something that they're not pretending that they're maybe a saint or some guru just be on your guard now typically these come from higher higher levels and those in the higher realms don't need to brag they don't need to come across as being anything you should naturally feel within your heart as in all spiritual work whether it be psychic mediumship or meeting people day to day use your intuition from the heart center now we have the physical heart the etheric heart the emotional heart the mental body heart we have all these different hearts and it depends on where we are we have different bodies for different planes the same as I am here in the physical right now I can touch a physical object because I have a physical hand to be in the astral plane to touch an astral object you need an astral hand or an astral body and it's exactly the same thing in the mental plane you need a body a mental body to actually touch things now what does it feel like is it all wispy no it's exactly like it is now and in fact one of the strange things you may actually find is if you wear glasses when you're in the astral world you don't need them because your eyes are so much better things are clearer more vibrant now this is a weird one your astral vision is 360 now as in a human body we have two eyes we see forward and we have to tilt our head round I've done this a few times it is strange but it is, does feel quite normal and natural you do tend to see around you but your focus of attention is as we are now in one direction so how long with astral projection will this take initially it's like it's like an exercise it's the same as going to gym it's flexing your astral muscles this time it's something if you want to achieve astral projection you have to keep working at it if for example you say you did a month and gave up it very quickly diminishes the ability to do so and it's I've done this many times then you have to start from the beginning all over again which can be quite frustrating so it's better to work at it no you don't need to keep doing it every night but at least a few times a week work on the technique you will find you'll pop out you'll pop back in again or some one of the most common things and just be aware of this you'll think I couldn't settle it's, it's only been 10 minutes I give up and you look at the clock and you think where did those two hours go what you've done is successfully astrally projected but you haven't actually retained that information now what normally happens is when you when the consciousness comes back into the physical body it downloads this information into the brain which is stored which we we understand as memories now sometimes it's actually stored in a different place now there are varying techniques such as setting your alarm personally I've never been very keen on that idea <clears throat> setting your alarm at 3 in the morning so you actually remember your astral projection it is better to actually learn to be more conscious and the ability to do this is actually focus on keeping the mind awake focus on something don't tend to drift off let me just recap on the technique I preferably lie in a bed comfortable pillow a travel mask and if you haven't got a travel mask a nice soft t-shirt just over the bridge of your nose and around your eyes just so there's no light coming in put some earplugs in now you can use swimming earplugs or you can use cotton wool that's dipped in moisturizer makes some nice little tight sort of buttons stick those in your ears or you can put some gentle nice relaxing music from your iPhone mp3 player CD player it doesn't really matter get yourself relaxed do some initial breathing work through your body work from your feet imagine your legs sinking into the bed 
your it's like going into sand work and focus on all of your body make sure there's no tension and as you're breathing you will start disappearing your brain waves will alter now you will reach a point I would say about after 10 20 minutes it all depends on how well and how quickly you learn to relax the more you do the quicker you do it so you get to this position watch out for things like clicks being on the waterbed effect where you suddenly start rocking these are all early signs of astral projection initially you may find yourself in your bedroom but I can guarantee you first time that you do it you will be going wow it is very exciting it's something that we can do and as you develop and it does take constant effort to work with it let's just say you wanted to visit the pyramids in a matter of seconds you can be there there is an advanced subjects on this topic and I could probably talk for hours just on astral projection just on the techniques stick with the technique that I've given you for now keep working at it it probably take you a few weeks before you maybe get a successful astral projection there are things that tend to hold us back and fear is one of them so don't be frightened about what's going to happen just explore it if anything happens that you're uncomfortable with you will shoot back into your body so don't be worried about anything go exploring and try and keep positive about things and remember, the astral world, the lower astral world, are pretty much like the Earth, but the higher ones are so beautiful. I can't even express to you how beautiful they are. The wonderful big oak trees and the water, everything is just vibrant and alive. It truly is exciting. It is something that I would recommend that you study and expand on. Now certainly because of the complexity and depth of the subject, although we're keeping it simple for now, there are further techniques that I will cover in my teachings. Remember, keep practicing at it. If you have like a few weeks or a month off, you have to start again. Keep practicing, working at it. And it is a lovely technique, so watch out. And remember that buzz. Now that buzz that I'm talking about, like being plugged into the mains, may give you a little bit of a startle it's something that you may never have experienced just relax into it don't be phased by it it is quite normal just breathe a bit deeper and relax and it's usually at that point when you get this massive surge of energy you might hear a click and all of a sudden you'll feel yourself floating and you'll be aware that's it for now I hope you've enjoyed that. It's a topic that I find fascinating and very exciting and I hope that I've come across with some enthusiasm about a subject. It's something that I experienced very much when I was a child and certainly from a younger age and it's always kept me interested. So that's it for now on Astral Projection. Keep watching, I will do further modules on this to expand on it. Keep practicing, let me know how you get on. I'm Andrew Garling.